bam, bow, bow. We can't. We can't actually hear it. Yeah, no. For some just, reason, we don't get to hear no, it. No, no. So if I was on time, that would be an anomaly. I mean, we don't need to hear it. We know what it is. <laughs> that's that's true. The question is, do you people know what it is? You people. It's Wolf Den Podcast. It's Wolf Den Podcast time. Yes, it is. Very special Wolf Den Podcast. Yes. Will, happy birthday. Aww, you're so You old. remembered. I, I am I am ancient. My God. Let me tell you something. Uh, people were not meant to live past 30. No. Remember, like back before modern medicine, everyone died really early. Just call it. So, yeah. So that's why, <laughs> that's why your knees start hurting. That's why your back goes out. That's why you can't eat certain foods anymore. That's why it's shit weird now. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's all happened. downhill. It really is. So congratulations. Thank you. On making it this far. Yep. It'll only get worse. It really does. <laughs> so uh, for Christmas, I gave you a very thoughtful gift. I got you a Steam gift card. You did. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, still got money on it. So as we all know, <laughs> Steam Deck died. Yes. Now I did not get you another Steam Deck. Okay, I was not but expecting that. Here is my MSI Claw, oh, which will get, oh. which will allow you to play all of oh, the Steam games. Thank you, Bob. Will Arkham? Uh, what are we Asylum. Playing? Will Arkham Asylum run on that? I bet it won't, but I'm, <laughs> but I'm very curious to see if it does. I will, I will put it through. Now its that is only until I get the other Steam Deck working. Okay. So, fair I, enough. Because I figure you want the Steam Deck more than you want that. Yeah. Well, I figured you wouldn't want a Windows machine. <laughs> well, I'm willing to give this a fair shot because, okay. like, for all my blustering about how PC gaming is, a, here's a case. Too. Oh, it it doesn't come with a case. Of course not. For all my blustering about how PC gaming is stupid and like dumb and compared to console gaming and stuff, that's all true. <laughs> However, I was enamored. Like, portable gaming has like always been like the uh the what you call it like the final frontier i guess mm. you would say of gaming where like yes you have it on the nice big tv but like you can take the same game with you in the car to bed on the toilet you know wherever you may go so the the idea of the steam deck <clears throat> was like gaming perfection in a way and i thought i thought valve had cracked the code i guess not it shows what they know um but I'm very, i mean, i i like I don't know what happened. Yeah, they, they are the cl- they are the closest to getting it right. Right, so, they're the closest to getting it towards being an actual console. But I'm willing to see like what because I've thought like how is how does the Ally compare? How does the Lenovo compare? So I didn't wipe that. Okay, it still got all my stuff. So to be honest, it's set up. You can just use my shit. It's set, just log me out of Steam. Like okay. uh, everything's pretty much set right. up. Right. I figure if, if it acts like a Windows PC, I'll just log you out. It'll of just Steam, say, right? "Hey Bob," when it turns on. Yeah. But you can change whatever you right, want. Right. Right. Um. But yeah. It, so that way you don't have to go through all the rigmarole of setting the thing yeah, up. Yeah. It's it, it's it's all set up Ooh, and everything. Well, thank you. Oh no problem. But I, I foresee that you're gonna hate it. I foresee that you're <laughs> not gonna like being in I the mean, Windows environment. Like one of the things I don't like about PC gaming is like. The modularity of it, the fact that like you have to configure every little thing to get it right. I know it's better now, but like it's still if your graphics card is like, you know, one year old, you can't run this year's game. Or like yeah. if you're if you're have half the RAM, even though it says it takes 16 gigs of RAM, if you don't have 32, it just crashes all the time. Like things like like the inconsistencies like that like always bother me about PC. Or it's games. constantly holding down a button even though it's not and there's just exactly. no, absolutely no way to exactly. fix it. And they or just your say mouse, you're shit out of luck. Your mouse has the wrong kind of RP uh RPG. R B red, blue, green. R B G oh. RGB. RGB. God, <laughs> see, I can't even get that right. It's too much. Do we don't have this shit in Xbox and PS5 I, land? I saw on uh one of the Reddits today. I saw that somebody's uh, Lenovo Legion Go the uh the Joy-Con will not connect anymore. Really? What do you do? You just screwed. Yeah, that's just it. You, I mean, people have warranties, but not for too long. I know. know. Yeah, that, that's another thing too. Like you know, these warranties don't last. I'm very disappointed in Valve with the with the uh, Steam Deck that we currently have. Yeah, very disappointed. But I need to. I I I, I need to know what happened. Like, there's got to be some sort of hardware yeah. failure that happened. 
Oh, God. Anyway, uh, hey, 10 bucks from Josie over on the YouTube. Happy birthday, Will. Get yourself a coffee or whatever you East Coasters. I made myself an iced coffee today. You know Target sells cold foam? If I could just make cold foam oh, cold brew God, in my I house. You. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And it tastes passable. <laughs> cold foam is very easy. I know, it's just it, sugar it and just milk cream. and you whip it. It's just whipped cream. The, the the thing that I think turns people off from making their own cream is that you have to put a lot of sugar in it for it to taste good. Yeah. And they'd rather not see how much sugar goes into it. PC is for the tinkerers. Yeah. Yeah, but imagine if you didn't have to tinker at all. Yeah. Anyway, we got a big show today. We got a lot to talk about today. Uh, we got uh, We got to talk about Big news, um, I think biggest news of the week. Oh, biggest this is very the, big news. Of the potential month. Uh, Apple <laughs> acknowledged emulators and was like, they're cool. Yeah. I we'll feel allow like, it. I feel like people knew it was big news, but like I also feel like people were afraid to say it was big news. Really? In a way, because like, it wasn't treated as like the world-shattering event that it actually kind of is. It is. It's such a big... I'm surprised nobody did. You're, yeah. you're right. Nobody was like... Treating it like, like earth shattering news, but it is earth shattering news. Everybody reported on it because it's news. Yeah. But like nobody was like, you know, stop the presses. There were no like op eds on it or anything yeah. like that. So there, there were some people I tweeted about it, and there were some people who were like, uh, this is disingenuous because uh um blah blah blah. Like it's, I one of the reasons was like um it oh it, it you, you, we won't know how the ROMs are actually going to play on it because yeah. cause they specifically, I mean, we'll get into it, but they specifically said like, uh, uh, you have to get your own ROM basically. Like yeah. the, the Apple acknowledged <laughs> it that much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you can't just download the stuff, which I think is reasonable. Yeah. Like there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. The other stuff we're going to talk about today, uh, old games, are the most popular games. Uh, Microsoft sets up Xbox preservation team. That's very nice. Man. Okay. YouTuber fighting Ubisoft over shutting down the crew. I'm going to raise this up a little more because I watched most of that video. <laughs> I didn't watch the video, but I think the whole concept uh, is, is important. And it, it talks, it goes back to like what we keep talking about. Uh, games preservation, keeping games alive, keeping games accessible to the public yeah. beyond what the companies who make the games say they should be accessible. He seems to be actually doing something about, right. about it. Yeah. And, and I, I support this 100%. Um, and then a bunch of other stuff, right? Yeah. Yes. Bunch of other stuff. Oh, I want to put Star Wars Outlaws a little higher too, because yeah. uh, I want to shit on them for a little bit. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So that's it. Uh, let's talk about uh, Apple getting into... Getting into yes. the <laughs> uh, Do we do the Twitch? Twitch? Uh, oh, did people yeah. donate to us? Uh, oh, Pixel Adventure, thank you for the five months. And Razzle Jazzle, thank you for the 42 months. And, and H3 Catacomb, thank you for the 19 months. And Sir Gear, thank you for the 18 months. There we go. None of them <laughs> left a note. Uh, that's not true. Pixel said woo. Pixel? Yeah, Pixel Adventure oh, said, said woo. Woo. Okay. Anyway, Apple opens up the App Store uh, to retro game emulators. Yes. Let me open up the article. I saw somewhere <clears throat> say that this was only Apple TV, but that's not true. I think a lot of people were most excited about the app possibilities on the Apple TV. Why? The, the, the f iPhone. Right. But TV. So, so many people have iPhones. I think that because, okay, I mean, we're not reading the article yet, but I think because Apple TV like is a very capable gaming machine. Mm -hmm. And despite Apple's best efforts, nobody respects it as a gaming machine you know because yeah. all the games that they have on there are really just ios games i could like, see that yeah up res to uh 4k and can play be played with a controller so i think this is the first step to making it a respectable gaming um uh, piece of hardware okay yeah beyond just you know iphone game i think people see it as like a console yeah because it's, it, it's the closest you get it's the closest Apple's going to get right. to a console. Yeah. 
Okay, Apple is loosening its App Store restrictions and opening the marketplace up to retro game emulators. In an update on Friday, Apple announced that the game emulators can come to the App Store globally and offer downloadable games. Apple says those games must comply with all applicable laws, though, an indication it will ban apps that provide pirated titles. The move should allow the retro console emulators already on Android, at least those that are left, uh, to bring their apps to the iPhone. Game emulators have long been banned from iOS, leaving iPhone owners in search of workarounds via jailbreaking or other workarounds. Um, they are also one of uh, they're also one of the key reasons so far that iPhone owners in the European Union might check out third-party app stores now that they're allowed in that region. Uh, Apple's change today could head that off. Alongside the new rules on emulators, Apple also updated its rules around super apps such as WeChat. It now says that mini games and mini apps within these apps must use HTML5, clarifying that they can't be native apps and games. The change uh, seems to come in response to the antitrust lawsuit filed by the United States, which accused Apple of attempting to stomp out both cloud gaming streaming services and super apps. Apple recently started letting cloud streaming services like uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming and GeForce Now onto the App Store. Outside of the U.S., Apple seems to be responding to pressure from the European Commission. In another rule updated today, the company said it will now allow music streaming apps in the European Union to include in-app links that point users towards outside purchases and mention pricing information. It will also allow developers to invite users to provide their email address for the express purpose of sending them a link to the developer's website to purchase digital, uh, digital music content or services. After the commission called Apple's anti-steering rules illegal, Spotify attempted to update its app with links to its website to purchase subscriptions, but didn't receive approval from Apple for weeks. Spotify still isn't happy with Apple's most recent change, however, as Apple is still planning to charge a commission on purchases made through outside links, despite EU commissioner uh, Marjorie uh, Vestager saying Apple must allow music streaming apps to communicate freely with users. Following the law is not optional, but Apple continues to defy that decision. Spotify <clears throat> spokesperson uh, Jeanette Moran tells The Verge, effective April 6th, the commission can start non-compliance proceedings uh, and impose daily fines. It's time for divisive, decisive action to once and for all give consumers real choice. So <clears throat> this is thanks in large part to the uh, European Union uh, cracking down on Apple. Yes. Uh, that doesn't have reach here in America, but for whatever reason, they're they're loosening up their I think it's one of those service. things where it's just easier to loosen it up worldwide yeah. than it is to like segment you know certain things here and there yeah. and it means that they had to have certain provisions for specifically right animals. if they're gonna have game streaming services why not yeah and it's just interesting that they're like hey we know emulators are gonna come here so we might as well write that into the terms yeah. of service and they could straight up have been like no emulation mm -hmm. to consoles that are already exists because you know they might want a good relationship with nintendo or whatever but it seems like they don't give a fuck about that yeah uh it seems like they see where the law is um notably valve just a few months ago was like we don't want to get in trouble hey hey nintendo is it cool if we let dolphin on on steam yeah and they said no apple's just like yeah come on down we don't care mm -hmm. it'll be fine uh so here is exactly the part in their terms of service is it even terms of service uh yes i believe it is uh I keep calling it terms of service i think this is like uh, this is the fine print it's the fine print regardless of what yeah, yeah the app store like rules or whatever yeah uh here it is it says uh mini apps mini games streaming games chat bots plugins and game emulators mm -hmm. that's them specifically acknowledging emulators apps may offer certain software that is not embedded in the binary specifically html5 mini apps and mini games streaming games chat bots and plugins additionally retro game console emulator apps can offer to download games you are responsible for such software offered in your app, including ensuring that such software complies with these guidelines and all applicable laws. 
So they're saying, hey, man, we know emulators are uh, can can exist and they're fine and yeah, they're allowed they're popular in, in a lot with of the kids. They're popular with the kids. They're allowed on a lot of different app stores. Mm -hmm. uh, just for the love of God, don't allow downloading of the games. Yeah. Which I think uh, is extremely reasonable. And I think most, you know, most, if not all emulator makers out there today understand that they understand the the rules to a t and they wouldn't want to risk well i don't know. You know having you know being able to download super mario brothers straight to your phone i think all emulator makers know that you just can't have the rom available right but um i think that there's a lot of emulator makers who are going a little over the line right we, we, we saw with yuzu where they're like having a patreon and whatnot yeah um after play, I made a video on this already. They're, they're uh, on iPhone uh, mm -hmm. emulation and stuff. There's a web app called After Play, which yes. is awesome. Uh, it allows you to play your ROMs through a web browser, and it feels like you're playing it on your phone. It's not streaming. It's it's just it's cached in your web browser on your phone, so you are playing it off of your phone. It's not yeah. streaming, um, and it runs awesome. The way that works. Uh, you upload your ROMs to like some cloud service and then it downloads to your phone mm -hmm. whenever you want to use it or whatever. Um, there was a different app called Eclipse that's not as good, uh, but they had Google Drive support. So you link Google Drive and all of your ROMs are there on Google yeah. Drive. I would like Dropbox support specifically because all right. my ROMs are on Dropbox. But um, that seems to be the workaround because on an iPhone, you can't just put files on an iphone you could but it's like a pain you, you could you have to like connect it to your computer first and at least on mac you have to go into finder and like start clicking and dragging on windows you, i think you have to actually go into itunes it's not as easy it. as yeah. uh it used to be or it's not as easy as plugging in uh and a micro sd card and dumping your ROMs. yeah it's not or like that easy. connecting your phone to your computer and it's showing up as an external drive yeah like that would be the easiest thing to that do. would be and then you have a whole file system and everything yeah. uh it's not like that so getting the games onto your phone is going to be a bit of a problem yeah. but again just integrate dropbox and everything will be fine that extends to also to the apple tv because that mm -hmm. doesn't have a way to connect to a computer right at all there's no like usb cable there's no micro sd card slot the only way to really connect to it is over wi-fi or if you have the more expensive model like with an ethernet connection right so they would have like the uh the app makers would have to uh integrate a way uh for cloud saving uh for cloud linkage to dropbox or google drive and whatnot yeah. like it, it becomes that much more important and that doesn't mean you need internet access to use it. It should cache. It should just be the first time you use it. Yeah. Or you just at, least, download it. at least be able yeah, to download it to your device. Yeah. And cache maybe, it yeah. locally somewhere. Yeah. Um, that's perfectly reasonable. But again, huge win for us because uh, this is Apple specifically acknowledging it. This is one of the biggest uh, store, uh, digital storefronts in the world. Yes. Uh, so having specific provisions for emulation is a massive win for for us. I was yeah. uh, uh, like two, three weeks ago. I was actually worried that their emulators were not going to exist anymore. Yeah, <laughs> and now this gives it some legitimacy. Mm -hmm. Um, did I thank Hadley for the five British pounds? Happy birthday, Will from England. Oh, thank you. Good day, Governor. <laughs> I got my spot of tea over here. Love. Shrimp on the barbie. I know England. <laughs> mm, yes. Um, all right. Now I'm looking at the chat, Steve. Okay. A lot of people in Japanese on Twitter complaining about Delta emulator being jank. Oh, that's... There's a lot of really janky um, iPhone emulation stuff. Well, yeah, right now, because it's all... Uh, you know, under the table. It's all, yeah. you need a jailbroken iPhone. Yeah. You need to like know how to like hack an iPhone and things yeah. like that. Like it's not official. I remember there was an official, unofficial GBA emulator for the iPhone. And it was during like the brief window where you were allowed to download apps from the web. 
It wasn't really like downloading it from the web. You had to like save the web page as like an icon on your. Oh, desktop. that's what I did with Afterplay. Yeah. yeah. And like you could like they would, they would allow you to like upload ROMs and stuff, but like that got shut down quickly. And I think Apple closed that loophole, and there haven't been emulators on iPhone since. Yeah, uh, unless you like jailbreak it or whatever. Yeah. I, after, after I made my video on Afterplay and all the other ways you can play games on your iPhone, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people were telling me I have to try all this other stuff, and a lot of it was had to do with jailbreaking the 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 phone and. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to do that. I've jailbroke. I jailbroke my phone many years ago. Yeah, like when I had the three G, uh, and it ruined the phone. Like the phone yeah. was worse after doing yeah. that. And I don't think it's changed much. Uh, I did jailbreak my iPad. I think to get Dolphin on it. Okay, uh, and that also sucked. So yeah, I'm not. Uh, it's not worth it to me. Plus, I have a million other devices I could play these games on. Yeah. Uh. Having an official storefront that just lets me download like RetroArch or whatever would be great. Yeah, it's gonna be a while till uh, that stuff like gets approved on the App Store and mm -hmm. then uh, yeah. you know makes it to us. So it'll I, it'll, it'll be a, probably like a couple months. Yeah, I do wonder like is there gonna be some like weird Apple rules to the whole thing? I think it's possible they're saying this and then they just don't allow. Because I was listening to the Verge cast. It was an older Verge cast, but it was about. Um, you know, being able to sideload apps in Europe. Yeah. And in order to be able to allow a sideloading app like in Europe, Apple has all of these extra hoops you have to go through. Like they actually make it just as difficult, if not more difficult than they did in the past. Like you have to be, you can't be an independent developer. You have to be a legitimate uh, app publisher already. You have to have a million downloads of like your previous apps, which is very difficult to do. Wait, I thought, uh, are you saying that they're not allowing consumers to sideload apps? I mean, you, you no, consumers can sideload the apps, but in order to make a sideloading app available, there's still all these hoops you have to jump through. Oh, well, that's got to be squashed immediately. Yeah. Well, that completely invalidated. Yeah. There's so, well, it was like what they were talking about here with the whole, um, you know, not having to pay the Apple tax. Apple's still finding a way to make developers pay the Apple tax of 30%. And so they're trying, like, there's all these little loopholes Apple's yeah. finding and, like, working their way through. Malicious compliance. Exactly. Uh, yeah. It's possible that they do some bullshit with emulators, too. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be a lot of weird stuff. Uh, apps may offer certain software that is not embedded in the binary, specifically HTML5 mini apps and mini games, streaming game. Okay, yeah. Additionally, retro game. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking because I'm worried about uh, there's a lot of gray area with the uh, uh, BIOS files yeah. on, on, yeah, on yeah. Uh, emulator apps. Uh, our court system said they were legal 20, 30 years ago, but that doesn't mean that that could hold right. up, you know? So it's possible that they could say like, hey, you can't say that this is a GameCube emulator. You know, yeah. you can't use Nintendo cop copyright. You can't have the GameCube BIOS on here. There mm -hmm. could be like a lot of different restrictions on, yeah. on this. So we're just going to have to see. I see a future where uh, in a month or two, we had just had straight up retro arc on, on, our, uh, on our iPhones. Yeah, that would, would be, be cool. awesome. Yeah. Because retro arcs just start everywhere. Yeah. It it only makes sense for them to go to the last one. <laughs> but I also see a future where Apple does some weird bullshit and makes it just hard. Yeah. But regardless, they still added some legitimacy to it, and this I can only see this as a positive. Yes. Because because right now there's nothing. Yeah. Right now there's nothing on the app yeah. store. Yeah. But also too, like emulation. you know, like you said, this is one of, one of the big biggest app stores in the world. It's the biggest company in the world, and here they're they are legitimizing uh emulators in a way that nobody really has in the past right yeah. you know that then everyone's been actively delegitimizing yeah emulators. delegitimizing at worst or like ignoring at best yeah and here they are they're coming out and saying like all right have at it yeah. just put it. google's been pretty good because they've yeah. allowed it on the android storefront but they haven't acknowledged it yeah apple but, is over here straight up acknowledging exactly they it. haven't acknowledged it and like the android store you know, for better or worse, is like a, a wild west. Yeah. They have less restrictions. They have less, you know, oversight. But and at the you same can time, sideload. So it like, doesn't even load, matter. 
But at the same time, you know, that's like a double-edged sword because that leads to a lot more malware and malicious content and like just junk that like floods floods the marketplace. You know, yeah. say what you will about, you know, the walled garden, but there's a reason why, you know, apps you download on iOS are much more reliable. They're much, they're much, they come out much sooner because there's like a stricter set of rules to follow. And it's easier to follow that than, you know, having to make one app for like a thousand different Android phones and getting the approval process. So yeah. It's a lot easier on, on Android than, yeah. it was, than it is on iPhone. So, yeah, uh, I'm, uh, Happy with this news. Apple's new rules will let users sideload apps and download alternative app stores. They come at a cost for develop. Yeah, we just talked about. Um. So, oh, what's this? Oh, this is just a tweet about it, right? Yeah, that's um Wario sixty four's tweet about the fine print. Oh yeah, this is yeah. We pretty much read this. Yeah, I don't yeah. think there's any. I did a control F for emulation. And I think that was the only yeah, stuff yeah. that actually mentioned emulation. Software offered in apps under this rule must follow all privacy guidelines, of course, include a method for filtering objectionable material, so like uh, smut. Yeah. Uh, use in app purchases, use in app purchases in order to offer digital goods or services to end users. It must use in app purchases. Uh, do they mean like. Oh, to offer digital goods? You have to use in-app purchases, not offer your own side marketplace like what Epic tried yeah, to do with Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. Uh, your app may not extend or expose native platform APIs to the mm -hmm. software without prior permission from Apple. Your app may not share data or privacy permissions, blah, blah, blah. You must provide an index of software and metadata available in your app. You, your app must share the age rating of the highest age rated content available in your app. So if, you, if you're a game streaming service like Xbox uh, uh, Game Pass, Pass. then uh, it's rated M. Yeah. Basically. The whole thing's rated M. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's great for Which us. is dumb because the ESRB specifically has like the rated, you know, E to M like sticker to explain that there's going to be a wide range of games in here, mm -hmm. you know, be careful of what you allow your children to say. Yeah. And it, they, and like game they, pass is smart enough to like offer a feature where like they can like filter by like action adventure games, yeah. by puzzle games, by games rated M, you well, know, this even said you need to have a feature that limits, yeah. uh, uh, age restrictions that has mm -hmm. age restrictions. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Xbox, Game Pass should have the E through M yeah. situation. That would make sense. Uh, anyway, let's... Hadley, 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 thank you for the five British pounds again. I've been a fan of you guys for two years now. It's genuinely made my day hearing Will say, Good day, governor. Thank you for everything. Glad that made somebody yeah. happy. <laughs> um crikey crikey mate uh let's go to uh the youtuber talking about the crew now i, I feel like this is a little uh misleading because i watched the video is 30 minutes long yes i watched a good like 15 20 minutes and he doesn't mention the crew until about 15 minutes in okay the majority of this is uh, wood is very upset i don't know why i don't know <laughs> i why think because upset. i'm i'm using his uh native vernacular that's, that's shrimp on the barbie crikey i don't know man y'all have y'all have the queen on your money you're all the same country yeah. to me. <laughs> really it's your fault <laughs> um so yeah the crew is just the the reason why they're using the crew is because it's a recent example. Okay, it's a game this guy's played, mm -hmm. and Ubisoft is based in France. Yeah, the company who made the crew, and France has very strict laws, and they could uh, there there's more that could be done in France than in America about this. Right. So that's why they're using the crew as an example. But really, this is a this is a problem that affects the whole industry right. and a whole lot of games. Right. And I feel I feel like it doesn't really like in the end, it doesn't really matter like what game 
he picked or didn't pick. Yeah. I think, you know, the fact that it is the crew isn't what's important. It, what's important is that somebody is actually like getting up off their butt and doing something about it. Yeah. Unlike us who just sit on our butts. Hey, I made a video. <laughs> I, was, I was a little upset because in the first five minutes he goes, I'm doing something about this. No one else is doing anything about this. I was like, I, they're trying, man. <laughs> but no, he's actually like writing to people. And, right. And, and trying to gather lawyers and shit. Yeah. Um, uh, all right, I'll just skip to the... Well, I just wanted to mention that uh, it, it's not just about the crew because it seems like, you know, people are going to see the crew and they're going to be like, I don't give a fuck. But right. it's really about... Well, no, it, it affects everything. Yes. You know, it, you know, what's good for one game will be good for everyone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ross Scott, who runs Accursed Farms YouTube channel, posted a 31-minute video on his channel. I'll uh, link it in the chat. It's very good. Yes, which outlines the problem and how he believes drawing attention to the crew's shutdown on April 1st could cause governments to enact greater consumer protections for people who purchase games on purchase online games. Um, as said, as laid out in the video, consumer rights for these situations vary in different countries. France, however, has some pretty robust consumer laws and Ubisoft is based there. Uh, this isn't really about the crew or even Ubisoft, Scott says in the video. It's about trying to find a weak link in the industry so governments can examine this practice to stop publishers from destroying our games. Um, according to a since-deleted blog post by Ubisoft, the crew had over 12 million players before it was delisted in December of last year. Even if most of those players weren't actively playing the game by the end of its lifetime, that still means that millions of copies of the game were sold, zero of which can be played today. This has become pretty common practice for a lot of online games uh, for some of the biggest companies in the industry, like when Square Enix shut down Final Fantasy VII The First Soldier in January 2023, or Electronic Arts sunsetting the mobile version of Apex Legends the following May. However, Scott hypothesizes that players don't form substantial collective action to save these games because by the time a company makes a decision to shut a game down, most of its player base has already moved on. This is why he's formed the Stop Killing Games Initiative, uh, which is attempting to rally concerned video game fans into pushing local governments uh, to examine the situation with the crew. Uh, the hope is that this can spark broader change. Uh, how Stop Killing Games Initiative is. So I just went to the website. There is a website. Yes. It's called stopkillinggames.com and you can <clears throat> select, uh, you, you select take action here. You go to your country, where wherever you are. Uh, I clicked on America and it said, here are the available options to take action in your region. Uh, contact the DGCCRF. And they give you all of the steps that you can take and all yes. of the... Uh, Usually, like, it's like, I don't want to say it's like a petition, but, like, they, he basically lays out exactly what you need to do to file the complaint. Yes. And these are things that they'll, uh, <clears throat> these are things that they'll then log and yes. see if they, it's worth uh, fighting over. Uh, and these these are, um, the end, uh, Stop Killing Games end goal is that governments will implement legislation that ensures the following. One, games sold must be left in a functional state. Two, games sold must require no further connection to the publisher or affiliated parties to function. Three, the above also applies to games that have sold microtransactions to consumers. And four, the above cannot be superseded by end user license agreements. Yeah, I think that there also needs to be stuff done about end user license agreements. Oh, like absolutely. They're, they're, yeah. they're, they're like, they get away with way too much oh, yeah. because of end user license. Agreements. Yeah. Like, you know, look at overwatch too. And I think it's, <laughs> I, <laughs> I think it's very obvious. No one's reading those. Yeah. And I think it should be obvious to, uh, courts I think that nobody's reading. No, nobody reads those. Yeah. And like, I feel like there has been, there's tried to be legislation before about it. And well, there like, there were cases where the end user license agreement won. Yeah, and that's the problem. Yeah, like they, it, no one's reading that. It should not count. It should not be legally binding. There's a great uh, graphic novel called Terms and Conditions where somebody took the end user license agreement to iTunes and actually made it a comic book. Wait, what do you mean? They, the script for the comic book is the end user license agreement for iTunes, and the that guy just did like uh comic book panels over it 
Like it's fa- like it's Steve Jobs as Frank Miller's Dark Knight reading the terms and conditions of iTunes. Or it's like the scene from Dark Phoenix where Gene comes back and it's the script is the end user license oh, agreement. So it's the, the the words are just the end user license agreement, yes. but the, what you're looking at is something completely different. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And but that like I was like, how could you make the end user license agreement interesting? It got me to read it. <laughs> okay. You know, but like that's the thing. Like the companies know this shit is boring and like yeah. obtuse and like opaque. They they know you're not gonna read it. They just expect you to scroll down and hit, you know, accept, yeah. which yes, I do, because I just want to play my game. Yeah, but you like, literally can't otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that it took somebody to draw pretty pictures over to get me to read this shit, like it shouldn't be like that. Yeah. It, it's uh it, there needs to be something written in our rules as a country that's gives jurisdiction to end user license like how much jurisdiction does an end user license agreement have yeah because right now they can get away with a lot and they yes. have gotten away with a lot yeah uh but you shouldn't be allowed to put anything in an end user license agreement that is different than how the law works yeah. already you know mm-hmm. um like i know we can't copy the software and sell it our on our own why do you have why do i have to sign a document that says that it's part of the law yeah anyway so He's mostly talking about how game companies uh, kill a game and they uh, rip it off the internet. Like, for example, uh, yesterday, uh, no more uh, Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U. No mm-hmm. more Mario Kart 7 yep. on the 3DS. No more um, uh, Mario Maker 1. All gone. Yeah. They just ripped them from the server. Mario Maker 1, interestingly, mm-hmm. uh, you cannot play at all. <laughs> yes. you, you can make a level. You can play the levels that are baked in. You cannot enter the core spot at all. You can't do anything. Yeah. Uh, I was reminded this weekend, I almost put it in the keep, but I remember we talked about it already. The Xbox 360 storefront closes this July. Oh, okay. Yeah. So same situation there. If you own an Xbox... Well, we're losing 360, a lot. <laughs> yeah. If you own an Xbox 360 and you only own an Xbox 360, like it functionally becomes unusable because they're going to shut it down. And like, I think... I think only a fourth of the games available on Xbox 360 are playable on Xbox One or Xbox Series. And I'd imagine that a lot of, I mean, that was the age of the internet. So a lot of them are going to be online only games or they're going to be games that require some sort of authentication or something. So his provisions here, the the things that he's said, that's what I like about this is that he's actually setting rules and and giving a proposal like this is how it should be. Yes. Uh, One of the biggest things, which we've said a lot, is that they should give the tools to people to make their to to make the servers accessible in their own way. Yeah. Like um there were games that did that recently. I mean like think about like Quake, like the original Quake, like mm. there's some people running Quake servers still. I think Halo. Yeah. Yeah. There's Halo 2. Yeah. Like, they shut still... down Halo 2, but people mm-hmm. are are still running Halo 2 servers. Yeah. Uh, because they could do it themselves. Um so if you're not gonna support the servers on your end, publishers, let the fans do it. Yeah. Give them the tools to keep it running. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's not one of the provisions specifically. Uh, but he, uh, he, he said he was about to put that as one of the provisions, but that might get murky because then companies could just uh, put the onus on other people to, yeah. to, to, to fix the game for them. But... I don't think that's so bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, I'm reading the 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 provision because I want to make sure I got that right. Um, there was another thing that he was. Oh, uh, he's suggesting that game that this doesn't apply to software. This only applies to video games. Um. Which I understand, yeah, because it would get a little more complicated with software because mm-hmm. uh, uh, software dies all the time. Yeah, but I don't like the idea of separating games and software <sighs> legally. Right, I feel like because that makes things a lot worse in other areas. I know, but at the same time, like it, it's weird because you know companies both treat games not like software, but yet use the laws for software 
to their advantage. Mm -hmm. You know, like they we, they spend so much time saying like games are an art form, games are a medium like comparable to books and television and movies and music and things like that. But when it comes to the legalities of it, they want to be which not when it comes to the legalities of it in terms of control yeah. of it, they want to be treated like software. They want to be able to, you know, shut down well, when it a benefits game. Them. Yeah, exactly. When it benefit when it does yeah. not benefit them, like in the case of backing up your games, yeah. uh, it's legal to back up your software and yes. your art and your media and whatever. They're saying it's not legal to back up your games because right. it's not technically not software. Right. Well, they want to be treated, you know, they want First Amendment rights like movies get, yeah, but they don't want, you know, the consumer protections that fans of movies get yeah. in the same way. Yes. So like nobody, you know, comes after you if you buy a Blu-ray and then rip that Blu-ray to your computer. They only go after you if you, you know, distribute it illegally. In in games, if they had their way, you buy the game and if you upload it to the computer, the SWAT team shows up at yeah. your door. I think part of the problem is that in Japan, I think it is illegal to rip the Blu-ray right. to your computer. Right. Uh, and that's where Nintendo is and Sony is. And that they're, yeah. they're that's how they think about these things. But yeah. here in America, we have rights. God damn it. Yeah, they're, eagles. Being, they're being ripped from us day to day. <laughs> yeah. But one of the things about our country is that we're supposed to have freedom. Yes. And I should have the freedom to do whatever I want with yeah. my fucking goddamn games. Mm -hmm. So... I like this. I like what he's doing. I'm going to, after this podcast, I'm going to fill out this thing. I'm going to send an email to the DGCCRF, whoever that, whoever that is. I doubt the FTC is going to do anything about it. This is, this is going to, this is going to be put on France for sure. Yeah, no, this is a hundred percent of France thing. Um, will they do anything about it? I don't know. I mean, sacre bleu. <laughs> well, well, France is part of the European Union, yeah. right? It should be the European Union doing it. It should be the it. European Union, but like at the same time, you know, they're doing a lot. They're doing a so lot. So if already. anybody's going to do it, it's them. You know, it, it's like it's like here, where like there is, you know, the federal law of the United States government, but then every state has different laws that like are specific to those states. Right. So France probably has specific laws to France that differ from like Spain and Italy and the other one. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i mean it sucks that we have to rely on foreign countries yeah to uh because the only one country rights. only one country matters right yeah I, I mean we've been on this earth for 30 something years some Thir more than others <laughs> yeah. here in this room <laughs> uh and our whole lives it's been america's the one who's gonna do something about yeah. it yeah and these past couple of years it's been America can't fucking do goddamn anything anymore. Yeah. You know why? It's Fauci's fault. <laughs> That's yeah, why apparently. it is. <laughs> Ever since he <laughs> gave, gave everybody us COVID. COVID. All right. Uh, 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 yeah, we get an echo sometimes. When I get loud, there's an echo. Too. Yeah, we're, we're loud after boys. After a while, just shut up. Welcome to the show. Could be a lot worse. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, next, we could talk about how old games are the most popular games. Yes, this is an interesting one. Oh, but first, Caleb Fox, thanks for the 21 months. And Mega Man, thanks for the 30 months. Yo, happy podcast day, team. Thanks, Thank dude. You. All right, 60% of playtime in 2023 went to six-year-old or older Person, games. little man, a little okay. man, a little man got 60% of all the playtime <laughs> in the world. That's crazy. Congratulations. A newly released games industry report by market researcher Nuzu shows that while PC and console market grew 2.6% uh, in 2023, overall playtime decreased as gamers spent more and more time in a smaller list of old games like Fortnite and League of Legends. In April, on April 2nd, Nuzu released its second annual game industry report, including a ton of data and information on what people were playing and spending on, and, and spending money on during 2023. According to the data, the PC and console game market grew and reached $93.5 billion in revenue in 2023. That might seem like a good like good oh, news. What PC and console excluding mobile. Yes. I was going to say, 93 is not a lot. Yeah. But if you exclude mobile, that's a fucking lot. Yeah. 
And that seems like good news, but drilling down into the data becomes clear that it's only good news for a small number of publishers and developers. News News data shows that the top 10 games on each platform ranked by their average number of monthly active users or Mao, uh, <laughs> nope, are filled with old established titles. Fortnite took the crown on all platforms, including Switch and PC. The rest of the lists include titles that won't surprise you, like GTA 5, Counter-Strike 2, Roblox, Minecraft, Rocket League, Apex Legends, Fall Guys, Valorant, and Call of Duty. Across Xbox and PlayStation consoles, only one dedicated single-player game cracked the top 10, Starfield. That's crazy. That's nuts. Because everybody hated that game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to further prove uh, that gamers are primarily focused on older games, News News data shows that just 66 titles accounted for 80% of all playtime in 2023, and 60% of that playtime was spent in games that are six years old or older. In fact, in 2023, five old games Fortnite, Roblox, League of Legends, Minecraft, and GTA 5 accounted for 27% of all playtime in the year. It gets worse. Of the 23% of playtime spent in 2023 on new games, which is defined as two years old or younger, more than half was spent in big annual sequels like the latest Madden or NBA game. Only 8% of video game playtime was spent on new non-annual titles like Diablo 4 or Baldur's Gate 3. While Newsu report, while Newsu's report does point does point out that you can still be successful in this environment, the reality is that gamers are spending less and less time in new games and more and more time in already established franchises and live service titles, making it harder for publishers and developers to find an audience. That's because unlike in decades before, you aren't just competing with whatever uh, hot new game is on the shelves, but instead are fighting for are fighting giants like Fortnite and Roblox, completely free games with endless amounts of content created by their users. It will be increasingly challenging to grow a game's player base, said Nuzu in the report, particularly in our current landscape where evergreen titles and robust content pipelines uh, reign supreme. In other words, good luck if you aren't making a big sequel, remake, or annual entry in some popular series. But who... We gotta get away from trying to be the biggest game in the world. Every, not every game has to be the biggest <sighs> game in the world. I Right, but I think this data shows that people, like most people, are playing the biggest games in the world. And those games happen to be your Fortnite, your Roblox, your Leagues, your Call of Duties, and they're all older games. Mm -hmm. So while you have, you know, your Epics and your Riots and uh, your Activisions like supporting their old games that people are still playing, you have all the other companies who want a slice of that pie. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to try to emulate that as best they can. Yeah, and you're almost never gonna be able to do it, right? Because uh, all of these games, yeah, came out like six years ago or more, like mm -hmm. uh, like Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, um, I tried to get my friends in the Rainbow Six Siege. Nobody's nobody will no. play with me. No. no, um, so of the games that they listed, uh, they listed Call of Duty, which I think is interesting because that game is not one game. It's a lot of games. Right. Because they release one every year. Mm -hmm. But they, this past year, condensed it into one app yeah. called the Call of Duty HQ. So when you want to play Call of Duty, you have to play it through Call of Duty HQ, making it one game. Yeah. And you click on that one game, and you could play three different Call of Duties well, within I that think, one game. I think that's more of like a byproduct of the fact that it was supposed, like this year's, last year's game was supposed to be an add-on. Yeah. And then... Notable idiot Bobby Kotick was like, it's going to be a full release game and I will eat your firstborn child if you do not do it. And then he laughed like this. <laughs> <laughs> While touching himself, I imagine. I want to know. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know if they roped it all into Call of Duty HQ so that they can make it like a super app, like well, a Fortnite or like a Roblox. Well, uh, now that I think about it, haven't they tried to do that in the past? Like they've tried to do like one like call of duty like central like one call of duty hq wasn't it called 
That's what it's called now. That's what it's called now. That's what it's called. Wasn't now. it called something before? I feel like the idea of the Call of Duty Super app existed, but like it wasn't what it is. Like what it is now is probably what they wanted it to be. What it was in the past was something like cumbersome and user unfriendly. I remember Call of Duty went through a bunch of different launchers. Yeah, because it was uh, you know, Activision, then it was BattleNet, and then and right, fucking Steam and what you yeah. know. Um, so I don't know what their intentions were previously, but I know now it's all roped into one and it's yeah. annoying. Um, but I'm looking at these and I'm looking at games like, like I see Roblox obviously is like the super app. It's like, it's like what, what Apple's going to allow. Yeah. Um, all of the, there's, you could play, there's a million games within Roblox. Yeah. Fortnite is trying to do that too. They're trying to have them, uh, their own game engine, have a million games within that. And I'm wondering if there's something to that, having like all of this user base playing one game. Mm -hmm. And that's why Call of Duty roped it all into one. So that like people who are playing Warzone and people who are playing Modern Warfare 3 act like they're playing the same game. So it seems like there's more well, players so or something can, like that. So they can trap you in one app yeah. and then just keep feeding you the next game every year. Yeah. And you, so you don't have to go looking for it. It's just I, right there. I've always said that Call of Duty should be a forever app because they don't change the game much. It should just be update the game well you know what's funny uh, it's shocking that they haven't done this yet but like madden and uh nba 2k and uh used to be fifa now fc whatever the uh, the tiger woods golf games or whatever those games should be the the prime example of like the live service game where yeah. you release the base model, and then every year offer a roster update. You can charge the full price for the roster update. People will pay it, but they haven't. You're not fooling anybody. Yeah, Just like, do that. Yeah. Wh like, why haven't they done that? Like, that makes all the sense in the world. Like, they're, they keep chasing these, like, forever games. EA has been making the forever game since 1980-whatever in Madden. And they finally have a way to just sell you Madden every year. Like they can sell it to you once and then sell it to you again every year without having you having to go to fucking Target and buy the game. Like they finally have a way to do that. And you can do all like the microtransaction bullshit you normally can. Yeah. Like you can get retro uniforms and you can get like, you know, legacy players and whatnot. You know, you can have John Madden be the football player on every team for like, you know, $10 or whatever dumb shit. And then, you know, when football season starts again next year for $60, $70, you get the brand new roster update with all the new stats, all the new stadiums, all the new mascots or whatever, whatever new modes that you add that improves the game, but it doesn't improve the game because it's been the same game since 20, 2004, you know? When, when I worked at GameStop, there were... People who would come in and only buy Madden every year. And yeah. That's it. And you know, because you know, you try to sell them something else. Yeah. Like I only come in here for Madden. Yeah. That's it. I'll see you next year. Or they would pre-order the file, the next year's Madden. They would come yeah. in, get Madden, and then they'd pre-order the next year's Madden. Yeah, yeah. Or Call of Duty. I either come in here and only buy Madden or either come in here and only buy Call of Duty. Yeah. So those are the games that should be a subscription service. Yeah. Like, oh, like wow or something. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, my original point was Call of Duty Elite app. Thank you, yes. Kiwi Gamer. Thank you. Yeah, that my, was what it was. My original point was going to be, uh, we don't need everything to try to strive to be the app that uh, that your play that is c consuming all of your time. You yes, know? like it reminds me of how the guy who's doing the Sonic movies just said the Sonic Three is going to be our uh, Avengers. It, we're trying to make it an Avengers event. I like how people are still using like the MCU as a template, even though for the past like three years, like people have been saying how sick they are of like the MCU. Yeah, because <laughs> I love how that like that's still a thing. Because Infinity War and Endgame was such a magical thing. Yeah, that will never be replicated again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like, don't try to do that. You're not no. gonna do it. Yeah, just make a good movie or mm -hmm. a good game, and whatever happens, happens. Yeah, don't go over budget. Yeah. Trying to fucking make the forever game because these games, I got news for you. Most of them never expected to be anything. Yeah. The only one, the only exception I'm going to say is Grand Theft Auto V. They yeah. knew that was going to be a huge game. Yeah. Uh, Freaking uh, uh, Fortnite. 
was never supposed to be anything. Fortnite as we know it now is completely different from when it launched. Fortnite as we know it now was like the side game. Yeah, the side game became yeah. the most popular. They, they shoehorned it in because they saw how popular PUBG was. And they're like, yeah. we should have a battle royale on this. Yeah. That has nothing to do with how the game was supposed exactly. to be. Uh, and another problem too, and this is why Naughty Dog dropped The Last of Us 2 multiplayer, was because they realized once you start doing like an online game and like like a primarily online game, that becomes all your studio does. So now all well, these, it's a lot of work. Yeah, all these studios are now trapped in just make, uh, making and maintaining this one game forever. I know Epic also makes the Unreal Engine, but they haven't put out another game other than Fortnite since Fortnite came out. You know, but it's I, worked out for all of them. Yeah, every single one of these, it's, it's worked out for. But it doesn't work out for everybody. Yeah, is is the point exactly? Okay. All right, there we go. And what else do we have here? Uh, our mom texted me asking if this text message was a scam or not. I told her it was. I sent her a gif of Admiral Akbar saying it's a trap. I wonder if she knows who that is. She texted us? No, no just, just me. Okay. She doesn't know who that is. Yeah. I, I, it's worrying how uh, often they think something's real. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you, know, when you get old. I can attest to that because I'm, I'm an old man. You're now. old. Yes. You're old. So. Yeah. yeah. I'm three years away from 40. <laughs> that's fucked up. <laughs> when I say it like that, it makes me cry. <laughs> You know what we should do? What? Have a cake break. Okay, yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> My wife made cake. See? Getting old ain't so bad. No! <laughs> well, maybe, because this becomes diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been having a, I've been having a lot of sugar. Oh, my God. It's so bad, because, like, Target has all their Easter candy still, and it's mostly Reese's. Ooh. And it's seventy percent off. The egg Reese's are the are the good ones. Yes, the egg shape. Yeah. Oh, yep. Snickers has good egg shape uh, candy too. Jerry was going off about some egg shape Twix. That's a weird one. <laughs> that is weird. I'll give him that. We're eating fun Fetty cake. Yeah. Uh, congratulations again, old. The best kind of cake. Here's a question for you. Uh huh. Speaking of egg shaped candy, okay. the Cadbury eggs. Do you like the regular cream cat, the Cadbury cream eggs? Because I only eat the caramel ones because I don't like the regular Cadbury cream eggs. What is the regular? It's, I don't even know how to describe it. It tastes gross. What is in a regular Cadbury cream egg? Uh, hold on. Hadley, you're from England. Cadbury's <laughs> from where you are. What's the cream in a Cadbury's cream egg? People are saying cream and fuck you for saying that. Because <laughs> that doesn't answer the question. Uh, I would never opt to have a, a Cadbury egg. Yeah. That's like a, you know, like if it's around and I feel like I have something yeah. sweet, but like for the most part, I'm never going to go to the store and be like, oh, I can't wait to get a the, Cadbury the egg. The problem with the, like the Cadbury cream eggs, any variant you have is like there's so much of it in the middle. Yeah. That like it's an overload. So like it's not something like you want to have all the time. Yeah. Uh, Clordy says, I'm from Scotland and I honestly hate them. Um, Pixel Adventure says, it's just fondant? That is what right. what it well, that's that why it's, what it is. That's why it sucks, because fondant sucks. I don't think that's what it is. Isn't that hard? Or like No, it's it's like not a cream. No. Sweet white and yellow filling. Yeah. That resembles fondant. I don't know if I've had a real Cadbury egg then. I had it once, and I'm like, never again. That's probably why I don't remember what it tastes like. Now I gotta try it. Yeah. Good little cake break. Those eggs are literally my favorite Easter thing. Well, you're weird. Yeah. The best Easter thing is a egg-shaped Reese's. <laughs> Actually, can I be honest with you? I, I think my favorite are like the hollow milk chocolate bunnies. Just like the the sh the shitty ones, like no, the like brand ones, no, like the lint ones, obviously. Okay, okay. But like you know, a nice like milk chocolate hollow specifically. I don't like them when they're like solid. Okay. Yeah. We've got some bad chocolate here. Oh yeah. It's very easy well, to okay. get shit chocolate. 
I mean, I say that, but again, I'm an American. I don't travel outside the country, so I don't know what good chocolate tastes like, I guess. <laughs> we have good chocolate here. It exists. It's not made here, but right. it's good. we have good chocolate here. You I can was, get it. I saw, I saw a video of like Tony Hawk explaining his favorite chocolate, and they were all like these specific like million dollar chocolates mint chocolates and like white wrapper and like okay i'll get those and those were very good okay i do like that there is some weird chemical in like hershey's and those types of right. chocolates that when, once you hear about it and you, you you hear that it tastes a little bit like puke yeah now when i have a hershey's all i taste <laughs> is puke there's a clockwork thank you for the subscription happy 14 months wolf rose love the con thank you so much uh, all right, let's talk about Microsoft real quick. Yes. Oh, we 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 took too long of a of a of a of, of, of a. There's no such break. thing as a long cake break. <laughs> all right. Uh, Sarah Bond was promoted to Xbox president a few short months ago and kickstarted something of a reorganization to streamline Microsoft's gaming organization to position itself uh, for the future. Uh, along with the act uh, with the act Activision Blizzard acquisition uh, complete. Xbox has become something of a gaming powerhouse with huge platforms across Xbox console and cloud, uh, PC gaming, mobile tiers, and subscription services. <clears throat> Even when you disregard the millions of Game Pass subscribers, Microsoft counts various other subscription services, uh, gaming businesses within that fold, from Fallout first to Minecraft Realms and World of Warcraft. Uh, the Is there a subscription service for Fallout? I guess. Uh, the complexity of the Xbox business is doubtless, uh, a, doubtlessly a huge challenge, but there are similar huge opportunities ahead of the firm. To that end, Sarah Bond recently sent out an email to rally her troops uh, while also sharing some interesting bits of news. Microsoft has confirmed to us that the correspondence is genuine. It's Fallout First is specifically for Fallout 76. Mm. I don't even think the it's required. The bad one that nobody likes. I know. <clears throat> uh, quote it's been nearly six months since we came together as an organization our collective achievements uh, in that time frame are tremendous everyone should feel incredibly proud of what we've achieved and excited about the opportunities ahead Sarah Bond said uh, we are moving sneeze break <laughs> God bless you uh, allergies 37 uh, um, we are moving full speed ahead on our next generation hardware focused on delivering the biggest technological leap ever in a generation sarah also touched upon microsoft's innovations in gaming ai understood to be a big part of microsoft's vision for the future of xbox uh oh boy. windows central was recently told that uh the parting that the parting x tech uh, lead and AI innovator Kareem uh, Chaudhry uh, was known within the org to be uh, for putting players and developers first. It seems that influence will continue uh, driving Microsoft's thought process on the tech. We are innovating in gaming AI, focused on delivering uh, player first, developer first value for discovery, engagement, and creator velocity. Further in, Sarah describes how Microsoft is continuing its work to integrate Activision Blizzard games and Battle.net games uh, into Game Pass and PC Game Pass. Uh, Microsoft brought Diablo 4 to Game Pass a short while ago in collaboration with the Microsoft Store platform team on the Windows side. Bond revealed that due to Diablo hitting Game Pass, Xbox has now become the number one platform for the game. Uh, we are integrating Activision Blizzard King titles into our services. Uh, we launched Diablo 4 into Game Pass. And Xbox has quickly become the number one platform for D4 players. D4 is a different game, not Diablo 4, so she should have clarified that. Oh my God. Uh, Bond reiterated some other games on the horizon for Xbox. We're integrating with Battle.net, uh, all while launching Call of Duty Warzone Mobile. All we care about I know. is the game's preservation. All right. Recently, the preservation of games has become an increasing concern as the shift to digital licensing model and online services has made it too easy for games to go permanently offline. Here's it's, the quote. Okay. We have formed a new team <laughs> dedicated to game preservation important to all of us at Xbox and the industry itself. We are building on our strong history of develop, delivering backwards compatibility to our players and we remain committed to bringing forward the amazing library of xbox games for future generations of players to enjoy 
Sources tell us that Microsoft uh, may have more to share publicly in this area around the annual Xbox showcase, which is expected to take place on June 9th this year. So having a dedicated team is very good. Yes. This is good news. We we think so far she's doing a great job. Yes. <laughs> uh, as said before, you know, not every Xbox 360 game is playable on Xbox One or Xbox Series. Uh, I think only a tenth of games released on the original Xbox are currently playable on Xbox One and Xbox Series. That's terrible. Yeah. They're, they are the most popular ones, though. Yeah. So there's a there's a lot of work to be done in that space. Uh, I, I wonder if this means they're changing or updating the model for how backwards compatibility works. Because previously, they treated all those old games like new games, essentially. They became individual purchases on the storefront that you download, you pay for, download, and run through an emulator. Mm. Uh, I wonder if there's if they're trying to find a new way where if you own the disc, regardless of whether or not it's available to play, you can put the disc in your system and it will just boot up a box standard Xbox emulator or a box standard 360 emulator. What I'm hoping is that this team helps developers uh, make their games available in the future. Like uh, we were just talking about uh, the YouTuber who's uh, trying to make sure the crew is still running. Yes. Even though those servers got taken down, trying yeah. to make sure that that game is still running. Hopefully this will get Microsoft to develop games with forward compatibility in mind. Like, yes. like when the game isn't available or when they have a whole new system, how are we going to get this new system to still be able to play yeah. Xbox uh, series games? You know? Yeah. I mean, now that Xboxes are basically computers, like, I mean, computers have the best backwards compatibility around. Yes. Partly because people can develop their own sort of uh -huh. emulators and backwards compatibility for certain games. Like I wouldn't know how to fucking get our copy of X wing to work <laughs> now, you know? Right. I don't think you can just put a floppy disk in my USB drive. And, and I mean, you can buy a USB floppy drive. Yeah. But then what you'd have to get, I think you'd have to get DOS box DOS box. Okay. Yeah, that's... Well, and that will have to run off of this. Yes. Floppy yeah. disk. There's a video there. Yeah. Where is our copy of X Wing? <laughs> but also, I need a PDF of the manual because the manual uh, uh, was the okay. Yeah, back in the day, that was probably you know really hard for us. Nowadays, like, come on, I did not look f for this too long ago, and mm -hmm. I remember still not being able to find it. There's gotta be. I have the manual here. Yeah, let's see if it has the DRM. So the for those who don't know, <laughs> X Wing had a the X Wing the floppy disk game for DOS had a DRM in it where when you loaded the game it would have a code and you needed the manual to decode the code. Yeah, and uh, we lost the manual and we're we're not able to play the game anymore. Mm -hmm. And I have the manual here, and I'm looking for the sodding code and I can't find. Oh, this is Tie Fighter. <laughs> wait it says x-wing though it says x-wing but it's clearly tie fighter wait a minute go back go back to the because is that just an ad for tie fighter it was yeah, an ad for tie fighter x-wing star fighter pilot, pilot manual. manual yeah this is it this is the x-wing thing but, okay but it was in the corner of every page was was send the code. that send that to me okay in the corner of every page was supposed to be the code right and I don't see it on the corner of any of these. Right. Well, here's here's why I, I say send it to me. Because I want to see something. Because, so you can just, like, obviously, you can just buy X-Wing right now. You can just buy it. It's available on GOG for $10. That version comes with the 1993 DOS version, the 1994 dos cd rom version uh, that's not what and we had. the 1998 windows version so that manual might not be the right what what do we need we we probably need the 1993 dos version because the 1994 is specifically the cd rom version and we didn't have the cd rom yeah version. we didn't have the cd rom 
Back in my day, I'm old, remember? Back in my day, if you wanted to run a game on PC, you had five floppy disks, and you had to put them in one at a time to install, and then you had to play it off the play disk. Five floppy disks is, I think, like still less than what's available on a standard CD-ROM. I'm, st I'm still searching for, for, for a manual. But I sent it to you. I, I told okay, you. yeah, let me see. I, I, I texted it to you, I mean. Uh, now we're talking about a game... And we're not even doing the backlog yet. Yeah. Now I want to get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Xswingmanual.pdf. Yeah, I've done this before. Oh, that's it! I found it! Oh, you did? I found it. It's a completely okay. different website. But okay. there it yeah, is. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's it, it right there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, on the corner of every page is the DRM that you need. Yeah. Okay. We got there eventually. I knew, I knew there had to be... I've done this before. I know I, you I have. I dug a lot and couldn't find <laughs> it. So... Now we got it. And this is why a game's preservation is so important. It's very important. I sent that to you also, just for some reason. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anyway. Yeah. So I don't, we were talking about Xbox. I'm glad they have a team in place for forward compatibility, yeah. backwards compatibility, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I don't know what exactly that means, mm -hmm. but they have been really good at backwards compatibility compared to the other console manufacturers they have certainly been better than uh than yeah than sony and nintendo have i think sony included ps4 backwards compatibility out of ease because like they were just building off of what they had done before meanwhile they have you know three other console generations that are that they've actively made difficult to play if you don't have original hardware then you actually have to like pay into their subscription service at the highest tier to access the older games mm -hmm. and that's not really pro consumer. Nintendo is a whole other story. They basically did the same thing, uh, but like, there's no easy way to play Wii U games now. There's no easy way to play Wii games or GameCube games. It's really only for their cartridge-based stuff that they have any sort of like playability for. All right, here you go. Backlog! 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 Yeah. Hey guys. It's Will. Hey! <laughs> backlog time! Welcome to the Backlog, a segment of the Wolf Den Podcast where we go through our entire video game collection, every game we've ever bought over the past 37 years, because I'm 37 years old today, MFers, uh, we put into an Excel spreadsheet. And today we're going to pick one at random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we have played it. And the random number we're picking is 468. 68. And that is Guitar Hero 2 for the PlayStation 2. Okay. This is a good one. That's a good one. Yes. Uh, why is this better than Guitar Hero 1? I know it is, but why? Uh, for me, it was better because it had a practice mode. Okay. Oh, so like, you can not so like, lose the the. So I can like actually, song? yeah, because like we didn't have Guitar Hero one, but like we we knew at least like a handful of people who did, and we'd go to their house and we'd play. And I'm like, oh, this game's kind of cool. Yeah, oh, that was back when I was like, I'm a drummer, so I got the rhythm, and yeah. like no one else could be as and good as me. And that was back when like I was a guitar player. And I'm like, oh, they made a video game just for me. That's cool. It's nothing like playing real guitar. I know that. Playing Madden is not no, like playing real football. Playing drums made it easier yeah. for me, I felt like, until Guitar Hero 2 came out and it became a lot more popular and people got really good at Guitar yeah. Hero. And then I was suddenly really bad yeah. at Guitar Hero. So we missed the boat on Guitar Hero 1, but we knew Guitar Hero 2 was coming out. And I'm like, I want that one. And so we got Guitar Hero 2. And for PlayStation? For play yeah, because it came out on PS2. Oh. Yeah, one and two were PS2 games. Uh, so we got Guitar Hero 2, and we played Guitar Hero 2, and it was fun. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. this was just a guitar. This, just a this, guitar. This was the apex of the popularity of, of guitar stuff. Yes. It was all downhill from here. <laughs> well, this was like, I, I guess you could say in its purest form. Yes. Because like, it's still kind of that underground feeling all the songs, except for like I think uh, two, are covers still. They still don't have the money for like the master rights, 
aside from, I think, uh, Jane's Addiction and I want to say uh, Primus. I could be wrong. What was Dragon Force on? Three. They were on three? They were on three. Wow. Yeah. I thought they were on one or two. No. Just looking up the set list. I mean, look, if you play one of these games, you played them all. Uh, you got the the notes highway come up you have to hit the right color on the deck of the guitar as corresponding on the screen uh because it's a guitar you also have to strum uh so that adds a little bit of complexity to it it was the quintessential rhythm game that, yes. that started the uh i mean guitar Hero one was already popular but this like just skyrocketed the popularity yeah and then uh after this they burned it to the ground they released every possible version well, of guitar I, what Hero. happened was this is an activision activision bought uh red octane who made the guitar peripheral for guitar hero and with that came the license to guitar hero and when activision got their hands on it they did what they always do and made it an annual franchise and ran the fucker into the ground yeah. so that's why i would say after guitar hero 3 they all just went downhill from there. Uh, this is back when the, they were still like vaguely independent and could like get away with a lot more stuff. And then there was just landfills of plastic peripherals. Yes. Now it's kind of hard to find a guitar, but yeah. back then, like 10 years ago or mm -hmm. so, or maybe 15 years ago, it was hard to get rid of a guitar. Yeah. No one wanted it. Inc it's incredible how things have changed. I know. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, I, this was a great idea and a great type yeah. of game. It's just unfortunate that there was like 20 damn games that were exactly like this yeah. released within a five-year period. And like this, so Guitar Hero 2 actually also came out on the Xbox 360. Uh, but those are the only two systems that like got this game. And the PS2... Like, yeah, it got Guitar Heroes and Rock Bands for a while, but, like, you couldn't carry your songs over from game to game. So, like, this sort of just became, like, lost to time when every new Guitar Hero would come out on the PS2 or even on, you know, the 360 version. Which stinks because this had one of the best set lists of any uh, rhythm game of its time or ever, really. You know, I'm looking at it now. It, it only had, like... Like what, 40 games? I have 40 songs? Yeah, 40 songs. Yeah, that's not a lot. No, but like, they're all good. It had very good songs. Yeah. That, that, again, they were also all uh, covers, aside from yeah, it was, like, uh, two of them. Stop by Jane's Addiction and John the Fisherman by Primus were the only two original songs. Uh, the 360 version also had um, original versions of Dead by My Chemical Romance and uh possum kingdom by the toadies would you say this is the best version of guitar hero i don't know I, like the, the set list is good and it's got like the quintessential rock songs but i don't know if it's the best set list. Uh, yeah that that's i mean it's it's the best of the classic style guitar hero the the thing is like once they started copying rock bands like it's the it sort of got like diluted because like Guitar Hero Five is also a great game, but you know why play that when Rock Band was there and just better, you know? Uh, then they did then they, like Guitar Hero Metallica was also good, but you should not give money to Metallica. So there's <laughs> that, you know. I would say this is the the last pure guitar hero the last like good guitar here not the last good guitar hero but the last like guitar hero that could stand on its own without like asterisks or like whatnot going about I'd it i assume guitar hero 3 had more actual songs on it right not yeah. just covers yeah it had more I covers think guitar yeah. hero 3 might have the better the list. thing about guitar hero 3 though is like it was the first one made by neversoft mm -hmm. And like they tried to add like a lot of like features like a battle mode, and I think like they overcomplicated things by making a lot of songs unnecessarily harder. Like the big the big finale in Guitar Heroes Three was a guitar cover of "Devil Went Down to Georgia." It's a great version of that song, but I think that was their way of like trying to overcomplicate it and make it like a real like 
I don't want to say the Dark Souls of rhythm games, but like that's what the well, mentality that's, was. That's what happened, and I th- right. I, I well, don't that's think that's what, so bad. That's what because <sighs> because then I you forgot. got Dragon Force. Yeah, well, that got too far because what was the last Guitar Hero before it crashed? Warriors of Rock went too far in that direction and made everything way too hard to the point where the entire the entire like. F- so, I forgot what it was side A or side B of uh, Rush's Twenty One Twelve was the final song in the game, and that's like half an hour. Oh my god! So like that's what I mean by like going too far. Mm-hmm. Whereas in Guitar Hero Two, the final song is "Free Bird" by Leonard Skinner. That's an eight minute song, and that's the classic like you know magna opus guitar rock song and that's like the max you want to be playing a guitar hero song because exactly. you got the highway coming at you and you're gonna get all guitar yeah, hero when the vision. guitar solo comes in and like it's a kick-ass guitar solo and you're like you're going fast and stuff yeah but it's the perfect length to like you know play the song and complete the song and like not break down by the end of it mm-hmm. you know it gives you the right amount of challenge is guitar what hero like. three though has Long Island's own The Sleeping. That's true. Probably their most yeah. famous moment of the band's career. <laughs> be, be it on uh, Guitar Hero. Yes. Um, and, yeah, I mean, we were rock band guys. We were, well, yeah, this was this came out before Rock Band. Right. Because uh, this was still made by Harmonix before Harmonix uh, teamed up with MTV and EA to make Rock Band. Mm-hmm. Um. So that's why I feel like this was the last of the pure Guitar Hero games. This was the original creators still doing it. Uh, and then they all they both went their separate ways. Harmonix, because they were the software company who actually like made the game, were able to take what they learned and put it into Rock Band. Whereas Red Octane were just the hardware company. Their hardware was better. Like the, the Guitar Hero guitars were leaps and bounds better than the Rock Band guitars. But the games were suffering because they weren't being made by Rhythm Game Studios. They were being made by... The Tony Hawk Studio. Uh, Stephanie in the chat says, "What old games does the new guitar that just came out work with?" They're talking about the Riff Master. Yes. By PDP. Yes. And uh, that, uh, I forgot. I it's, that it, it's made for uh Fortnite. Yes. Uh, festival, which is their way to make a rhythm game within Fortnite. Yes. However, it does not work yet with Fortnite Festival. Right. Because they haven't allowed X input to work with Fortnite right. Festival yet, supposedly. It will, it does work with Rock Band 4, which is the most recent Rock Band that came out. And I believe that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think it works with anything, really. Yeah. Um, right now, it's pretty difficult to get yourself a guitar and actually play any of these games. Yeah. Uh, there's also Clone Hero, which most people who are actual like diehard fans of these sorts of rhythm games, yeah, have picked up Clone Hero, yeah, because uh, it's just an easy way to get all of the songs in one thing. Not exactly legal because you are downloading songs off the yeah. internet and putting them all into your Clone Hero thing. Uh-huh. It's not as great as I would have liked. I set it up with Hannah because she wanted to play it, yeah, um, and she set up all the songs and stuff, but. Uh, it's not, not as nice, nice as Guitar Hero is. Guitar Hero yeah, has like, like the, you know the band like playing and stuff. The Clone Hero is literally just a black background, and yeah. it's actually difficult to. I thought it'd be a lot easier to mod, and it's really not. Yeah. Um. And one, one of the big issues that we have is you can download packs of of songs from Guitar Hero One, Guitar Hero Two, mm-hmm. uh, Rock Band, all of that, and we got all of them. Yeah. All of the like. Guitar Hero 1 to 3 and Rock Band 1 to 4, all the mm-hmm. songs. And the issue is that the original Rock Band, uh, the original Guitar Heroes have all covers. Yeah. And these packs of songs that you download for Clone Hero give you the, the Guitar Hero version and the actual song. Right. So there's an issue with ours where it plays both at the same time <laughs> and they're not exactly in time with each other right. one might be a little off yeah so it gets worse and worse as you play yeah and it sounds terrible which and is, unfortunately a lot of them are covers so a lot of them are broken which is interesting that you say that because like the covers that they did for the guitar hero games with like one or two exceptions 
were really good covers. I've never listened to them on top of each other. Yeah. But like if I heard the cover, like I'm I'm thinking to it right now, like the cover that they use for like Danzig's mother or uh Spinal Tap Tonight I'm gonna rock you tonight or uh you really got me by Van Halen. Like those sound like the actual song. No, they did a really good yeah. job. But a lot of them, you're like, something's off and I don't like yeah. it. Like I can specifically say, I can pinpoint the Nirvana cover, Heart Shaped Box. I remember that dude does not sound like Kurt Cobain. Yeah. So that breaks the immersion a little bit. Yeah. But like at least the instrumentation was like as close uh, as they could get. I remember seeing a documentary, uh, I think it was for Rock Band, but it was Harmonix. They said like, they were so particular with how, because a lot of the people who work on the game are actual musicians and have bands and would try to like, you know, and they were the ones like doing the covers. They would like watch concerts, pause the footage and like look at the amps to see what the amps were tuned to. And they would <laughs> buy those amps and like try to like turn the knobs to what those are yeah. live to try and replicate that sound. Like that's how like granular they got in trying to make these covers happen. Yeah. And for the most part, they all sound really good but they're yeah. still covers and you cannot uh always 100 percent capture the magic for yeah. whatever reason they got the uh bpm just a little wrong yeah and i don't i i, I mean to be fair i mean these are like rock songs and some yeah. of them uh aren't necessarily playing to a metronome you know yeah. so uh you're not gonna get it 100 you know? percent. yeah i mean there are songs like yyz by rush and um Mirror uh, Slew by Dick Dale. Those are instrumentals. Mm. So, like, the vocals don't really matter. And, like, they sound like almost exactly like what the actual, like, you know, master recording is. Cause it's like, you know, they're instrumental. So, like, it's easier to, like, I guess, mask it than it is, like, if they tried to replicate Getty Lee's voice, you would know. Yeah. And I wonder why exactly. Whoop. I wonder why exactly that was the way to go. I, like, I know it's a licensing thing, but yeah. like how much better could it have been for them to play the song themselves? I, I forgot what video I was they still watching have to license it. Well, yeah. But the thing is like, there's two licenses you have to pay. There's the rights to the song. And then there's the rights to the master recording mm -hmm. and the rights to the master recording are, is what's expensive. Mm -hmm. So if they wanted the Iron Maiden version of the Trooper, they would wound up having to pay a lot of money where if they just wanted the rights to the, to the song, the Trooper, they only have to pay a little bit of money. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we played a whole lot of Guitar Hero. We did. Too. Uh, we played a lot more Rock Band. When yes. That, when that came out. But this kind of paved the way for, yes. for that. Uh, this is also, uh, as the Wikipedia page reminds me, uh, you can play co-op in this game. So you got two guitars going at the same time. Some of the songs, however, it's guitar and the second player played bass. Oh, yeah. So you got I like, still play bass. When yeah. we play Clone Hero, I picked yeah. bass. Yeah, so you got like two different experiences. And in some songs, the bass was actually much harder. And in most songs, it's way easier. Yes, <laughs> but uh, I can specifically say uh, Thunder Horse by Deathlock. Um that song on bass is substantially harder than it is on guitar. Yeah. Or like so. a Primus song or yeah. something. Oh, like, yeah. I, I, I could see that. But for the most part, uh, you're only hitting one button at a time. It's yeah. Like two buttons at a time. Yeah. Now, there's so. no chords. So, so that, 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 uh, that's why I pay. And also yeah. the rhythm. I, yeah. yeah. I'd rather have rhythm than have to noodle around. My pinkies don't work too good. Yeah. You know, mine so. like locks, which yeah, is mine. Yeah. That's, I think that's a genetic thing. Probably. Yeah. My kids are screwed. Um, the Xbox 360 version also had DLC. So you can't play that shit anymore? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know the Xbox 360. For, I know that it did for Rock Band. I yeah. thought Rock Band was the first well, one. Well, was, there wasn't a lot. Like Rock Band, the big deal about Rock Band was like they had game, they had songs every week and they had it for like 20 years or whatever. Uh, the 360 version of, Rock, of Guitar Hero only had like, I don't know what this is, like 20 songs. Like that's it. And then like, goodbye. <laughs> All right, so uh, play rock, but not play. Get Clone Hero. It's yeah, like the same it's thing. It's just easier. It's I just mean, easier. honestly, uh, if you're really into like retro rhythm game stuff and you have a PS2 or a 360 working, 
Yeah, sure. Rock band uh, Guitar Hero 2 is the good. The hardest thing is the guitar. I've yes. seen people uh, who just use a keyboard and they hold it upside down right. and they yeah, they do they they map the, like these buttons yeah. to uh, you know the 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 colors and then yeah. the, and then you hit like the space bar. You, know, you can do it where a keyboard can like a computer keyboard can yeah. act like like the guitar. Well, it's a it's PS2, so I feel like that might be easier and cheaper than finding like the 360 version of the guitar. The easiest thing to do is to get it on Steam or to get Clone Hero right. and just use a Obviously. keyboard. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Guys, thanks for watching the backlog. Yeah, uh, you should come to a podcast sometime though. And subscribe here for more backlog. Bye. Bye. Okay. Anyway. Yes. Um, we got to plow through the rest of this we do. nonsense here. All right. Star Wars Outlaws. New trailer. Looks good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fuck that. Let's talk <laughs> about uh, how it's coming out. Uh, the game will arrive on August 30th for PlayStation 5, Windows PC, and Xbox Series X. That's a lot sooner than I thought. Yes. So what's the problem with the release date, Bob? <laughs> What could possibly be the problem with the game coming out on August 30th for the PS5, Xbox Series X, and Windows PC? It's that the game comes out August 27th, Will. <laughs> the game releases August 27th if you have the gold or the ultimate, I think. Who cares what they're called? <laughs> the fact that you have to pay double the price of the game in order to play the game three days early. That's the yes. problem. Yes. So... Yeah, they're saying it's an early release if you get the gold or the old yeah. edition. But we all know what that means. That means that they're getting the game ready for the 27th. Yeah, the game that, comes means, out that means they're punishing you for being poor. Yes. That's what it is. It's a it's it's a toll. You're paying a toll to get the game yes. on the day that it releases. Yes. Which is really, really frustrating. Because I always like to get games the day they release. I want to yes. play them immediately. Mm -hmm. I want to be one of the first people to play the game. But not if it's going to cost me more money to do that. Yeah. I don't even know if your game's good yet. Yeah. So it, 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 your biggest fans are the ones who are going to want the game immediately yeah. and you're punishing them yeah. for being fans. Also, P game sale, the first day of game sales matters the most. The first weekend is the mm -hmm. biggest deal for game sales. So you are uh, making it harder for people to, to buy your game. Yeah. When the game sales matter the most. Yeah. Uh. What was the the guy the Days Gone guy said? If you want sequels to games, you have to buy them at full price the week they come out, because like that's the most important time yeah. frame for publishers. Shit like this just incentivizes me more to wait and buy it on sale for half the price. Yeah, no, I'm definitely not doing yeah. the. I want this game. I want to yes, try it. It sucks because like I haven't bought like a Ubisoft game in years, and I feel like I feel like this is gonna be a Ubisoft game. Like the standard type of Ubisoft game, open world maps, uh, map. I'm hoping with this shit. is a little different. Yeah, me too. But like, I feel like enough time has passed where like I could play a Ubisoft game and not hate it and like actually enjoy it because it's been so long. Mm -hmm. So, I and, I and the fact that it's Star Wars and it's a it's an interesting setting time period in Star Wars and it's a new character and it's a new experience and adventure. Like I'm all for it. I want to experience this. Um. But not if I have to pay a hundred dollars to play it early. No, it's it. Uh, I mean, this happened with Starfield, and it really pissed me off. And that was yeah. a week, I think. Well, I feel like Starfield is worse because it was a Game Pass game, mm -hmm. and Game Pass proudly, because like we've seen this shit before. This this goes back to the 360 era, where if you buy a game, if you pre-order a game, you can play it early. If you pre-order the deluxe edition, you can play it early. Like that's not new. The thing with Game Pass was you buy, like, you get the game on, you yeah. get the game the day it launches. That, That's their big selling point. And they, and they went back on that big they selling went, point. They, well, I don't know if went back is the right word. They, they changed it for themselves. Yeah. 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 They, 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 that was a, people should be a lot more outraged about that than they are. Yeah. Because you bought into this subscription service thinking you're getting one thing and then yeah. they and then they they did some little semantic bullshit to make yeah. it so that it's not true anymore. Um so I tweeted about this and uh majority of people, you know, agree that it's it's bullshit that the game's releasing early. Yeah. Um 
But there's a couple people who are like, what does it matter? Like, what's the... Uh, my, my big issue is that I like to be a part of the conversation. People are like, who cares yeah. about the conversation? Who cares buy, what you have to say? Just buy it a week later. Yeah. You know, what's the big deal? And like, okay, fine. But I shouldn't have... To, again, I shouldn't be punished for right. wanting to be one of the first people exactly. to play a game. Exactly. You know? um, and then I got this tweet that said, consumer mindset. Why not just wait a week or so? With... with, with uh, See if it's even worth your time and money. There are more great games out there that you could play in multiple lifetimes. This is a developer, I think. Can you see that? Oh, no. That's uh, not who basically said the same thing to me. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, someone different. Uh, well, this is a developer who works at a, a, a company that like does like um, pickup development. Okay. You know, like, like, uh, I think they might have worked on this game, is what I'm trying to say. I think this, this guy yeah, yeah, yeah. worked on this game okay. and was like, you're an idiot for wanting yeah. the game early. First of all, consumer mindset. Yeah, I'm the consumer, dude. Yeah. I, I'm the one buying the game yeah. and I'm pissed off if about it. If your game's going to be ready early, yeah. tell us that and release the game early. Very strange. Don't, that, don't punish us for not having the money or not wanting to spend the money on the game. Yeah. You know? And also, a lot of people were equating this to Starfield in the replies. Yeah. And uh, people were saying, I did buy, like, people were saying that they did buy the Starfield Premium Edition just to play it a couple days early, and the game sucked, so they were even more pissed off that right. they bought the game early. Uh, Benny, the our, our editor here, yeah. said uh, games should go back to the pre-order, uh, where you pre-order the game and you get to play the game a couple days early. Yeah. And I don't like that either, but at least you're not paying more, you know? Yeah. And just saying, he's a lot younger, so him saying that, I'm like, how long ago was yeah. that? <laughs> you know? It couldn't have been that long yeah. ago. I remember, it was John Riccatello who, like, ruined uh, Unity back when he was, like, ruining EA. He, okay. like, he famously said, like, in a speech, remember when the game you bought was the game you bought? Like, that was a bad thing. Like, he was basically advocating for, like, you know... You know like, you buy... couldn't update it and fix it later. Like, like, like whatever bugs well, it came with is what it came with. No, he was basically, like, advocating for, like, the, the Overwatch model. Where, like, the game you bought can just turn into something completely different down oh, the road. No, And, that... like, we can keep charging you for things even if you don't want them. I mean, we like updates. Yeah. But, like, like, we don't like too much of it. Yeah. You know? But like that's the thing, like they abuse the system. Like we we've shown it's okay. Like if we pre-order the game, we can get it early. Now people are gonna pay more money for the game to play, to play it early, mm -hmm. and that's going to incentivize developers. It's gonna get to a point where it's like, you know, game seventy dollars. If you buy the deluxe edition for a hundred and forty dollars, you can play the game a month early. That's all. That would be a, a very early. <laughs> yeah, like it's gonna come to that. It's, uh, I mean, I also don't like early access. That's a thing that's been happening a lot. Yeah. Uh, and that is basically you pay full price for the game now and you get to play the game now, but the game doesn't come out for like a year. Yeah. And you're playing like the shitty version of the game and you're basically doing the QA testing for the developer. Yeah. And I mean, that's fine for games that need it because I mean, not every game can, uh, can afford to have, not every game company can afford to have a whole QA, you know, yeah. department. Um, but it seems to be a crutch that a lot of people are leaning on. Uh, they, they, they're they like, it's going to take a long time for this game to come out. How about we just release it now and yeah. we'll fix it later? And that kind of ruins the launch of games. Yeah. It, it makes it so that you're launching the game in a shitty broken <clears throat> state. Yeah. And then chances of people coming back when it's working are, are very low. Yeah. And like what happens is you have people, you know, like me advocating that, you know, consumers just wait, you know, wait the year, buy it on sale, get the game of the year edition that it comes with all the extra stuff that they're trying to sell for a profit. You know, you get the whole, you get the whole game plus add-ons for half the price of when it launched. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no incentive for people to buy games and play games immediately other than to be a part of the conversation. If the game is good enough, it'll still be in conversation a year from now. Mm, I like to, I I like 
parts of the gaming culture where a new thing comes out on like a day and you play it and everybody's talking about it. Right. I don't like this like trickle out of information like people are playing it like two days ago and I got to wait on my hands here. Because I don't want to pay the extra twenty dollars right. to play well, I mean, it. I guess I like, talk to everybody about it. We're in different situations where, like, you're more, you know, you're more actively in the gaming like culture and community but, because of like what you do. Yeah, and whereas, people were saying this on Twitter. Yeah, but I was like this before the YouTube right. channel. I wanted to because I would like watch content related right. to this. Yeah, and I would watch people do their reviews and talk about it, and I wanted to basically do my book report i wanted to like yeah play the game and watch the reviews along with it and see what i agreed with and disagree yeah. with that i wanted to be part of the conversation even before i had a platform to be part of the right. conversation but like you know nowadays i like have a job and a house and a wife yeah. and two feral kids so like i can't like you know sit down and play like the latest and greatest all the time i'm okay with wet with waiting a little bit i am currently playing dishonor 2 which came out God knows how long ago. I'm enjoying it. It's a great game, but like nobody's talking about that game anymore. I mean, I like playing retro games, and Dishonored yeah. Two is a retro game. I, You're old. No, it's a it's a last gen game because it came out on the Xbox One and PS4. That's last gen. Don't don't come for me. Shit, Dishonored One Shit, is a retro right. game. God damn. <laughs> okay, fine uh that's that's weird then you're weird <laughs> you're either old or you're weird um ah yeah i like my fair share of retro games yes but uh if a game if i miss that first week or two of a game being out i don't want to play it i'm like out I'm, I'm like if i'm not part of the conversation like, i understand I like with this, when the zeitgeist dies down like you feel like you're behind yeah everyone i remember when x-men legends came out like all my friends were playing it like that weekend and my girlfriend at the time wouldn't let me play with them. Uh, so when I finally got X-Men Legends? Yeah. When I finally got around to playing X-Men Legends, my friends were like, oh, we're done with that game. <laughs> yeah, I want to be able to like talk with other people about yeah. how good or bad a game is, yeah. you know? Or at least listen to them and know what they're talking I about. I feel like there are like there are certain games like you know that's gonna be the game. Like when Grand Theft Auto comes out, like that's gonna be the yeah, game. Or yeah, like definitely. you know, when a Mario game comes out or a Zelda game comes out or something like that. Star Wars Outlaws, I unless it's like really good, I don't think it's gonna be like a, a game where like everybody's gonna be talking Starfield about. Starfield was that game that everyone's talking about. And it was a week until I could play it. Right. You know, and everybody's talking about it. the reviews came out a week before that. So yeah. like everybody there's already all this conversation happening and I have to wait so long to yeah. be part of the conversation to even understand what these people are talking about. Like no like listen, I agree with you that like the the early release model is getting ridiculous and it's punishing consumers. I'm more advocating of consumer awareness where we have to train ourselves to be okay with avoiding the hype cycle and enjoying the games on our terms, not their terms. That's what I'm more advocating for in I, a way. Because I, I, like you can enjoy a game on your own timetable. You can enjoy right. a game at any time. Yes, being a part of the collective conversation is exciting, but... I, you know, at my nine to five, my boss just beat The Last of Us Part Two. That game, you know, that's an old game by this point, but he still enjoyed it. And we're still having a conversation about it because that game, despite what we've said about it, has stood the test of time. Mm -hmm. And like people do enjoy that game and like good games find a way to come back. Yeah. I think that that's a good message for people right now because there's nothing we can do about games releasing early for a premium. Right. So I want games to not release early for a premium. And the best way to get there is for people to not buy the premium price. Like we don't have yes. to live in this world because I need to remind everybody that the game's not releasing early. The game is being delayed so that the people who will pay will get it. Yeah. You know? This happened, like, games used to always come out on a fucking Tuesday. Yeah. And that happened when games started releasing on Friday. And I was like, that's weird. This is a Friday release. Yeah. Oh, oh, it releases three days early if you pre ordered it. Yeah. Oh, something's up here. You know, like, it's not like, wake up, sheeple. Like, it's not, it's not releasing early. It, I think, I feel like, I feel like, you know, in the PS2 GameCube 
original Xbox era, that might have been passable because those games had to have been done a month before release. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's nothing you could do about it. Once, you know, online gaming became more prevalent and patches and whatnot became more prevalent and you can buy games digitally well, they have became prevalent. Now they can just work on the game up until release. Yes. Yes. Release. Yes. But now that release it's is three days, three days early. early. <laughs> yeah. But at least the game was done. Like you knew the game was done. It, depending on whether or not the store would break street date for you was like a was like a chance you right. could take. Nowadays it's in the publisher's hands, and like the publishers already have too much power as it is. No, but I understand. But at the developer, they got a date written on the whiteboard. Yeah. And we gotta have the day one update done by this date. Yeah. Do you think Star Wars Outlaws has August 30th written down or <laughs> August 27th written down? Honestly, they probably have August 30th written down. No. There's a they have August 27th written down. This is when our servers are gonna get bogged Dude, with the day one update. I download. would not be surprised because it's a Ubisoft game. I would not <laughs> be surprised if yeah, it releases August 27th for people who like buy the deluxe editions but internally it's still an august 30th game so the game has to be functioning the game has to be by august 27th the, yeah it has to pass certification but games that pass certification are not always in a proper like optimized state right. so the patch could still be the, they could still have three days to get the patch right for you know the unwashed masses. I mean, game development is uh just just a perfect storm of of falling upwards upstairs. Yeah. You know, like it, it's amazing that it gets done at all. Yeah, but they're really working all the way up until the day the game releases for that day yeah. one update. And I'm telling you, these guys are have the 27th is the day that thing that everything's got to be spick and span because those people are gonna tell. The people like me who don't want to pay the money, whether or not the game's good. Yeah. We have so much more we on this do. list. Can we, we sum it all up real quick? Okay, yes. Um, Rapid fire these. The Saber Interactive Develop uh, KOTOR remake is still alive and well, despite them being sold out of the Embracer Group's Embrace. Cool. Okay. I don't know if people are still excited for that. I know there, there was it's, a lot it's of interest not lost. It's Aspire, right? It's not Aspire anymore. Okay, no, good, it's Saber Interactive. Up they have. And apparently it's not a PS5 exclusive anymore. I think Sony lost interest in it. I forgot it was a PS5 yeah. exclusive. Film. So there's that. Uh, Jeff Grubb said on the Kind of Funny X cast that Gear 6 is going to be revealed this year. Cool. I, I just assume they're working on Gear Where 6. Where does he get this information? I don't know. I feel like... And I don't want to say it's just him, but I, I see a lot of people on Twitter just say things and like I do that. get people like, but it's like the dumbest things. <laughs> it's like the dumbest things. And like, God bless James Gunn. He just comes out and like every time some, some asshole is like, hey, there's going to be a bizarro crypto in the new Superman movie. I, you heard it here. I did first. hear about and this. And like, it runs wild for like a month. And then James Gunn's got to come out and goes, Guys, fuck's sake, there's no Bizarro Crypto in this movie. It's just Clark Kent. It's just, it's just Lex Luthor. It's just a Superman movie. Yeah. <laughs> Way so, to keep my expectations at the bare minimum for a <laughs> Superman movie. You're getting the same thing you've always gotten, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, Roku's uh, has a new patent that allows them to stream ads to HDMI. Wait, hold on. Jeff Grubb is going to be on the Nintendo podcast. You need oh. to get your people to do a dot plane of how many things he's gotten right and how many things he's gotten wrong Wood, and presented to him. Woodrow, like <laughs> this is your this is your opportunity, man. Do some of that games journalism. <laughs> I want to see that. Yeah. I want to see the the spectrum of, of how yeah. much he's he's how much we can rely on the Jeff Grubb uh, yeah. rumor mill. Okay. Um Roku, based on recent patent filings unearthed by LawPass, the company is looking to develop a system or a method for ad insertion by display device coupled to a media device via high definition media interface or HDMI connection. What that the, means if what you're connected, uh, that means if you've connected another streaming device or console like an Apple TV, a Chromecast or a PlayStation to a Roku TV via HDMI, the company would still be able to serve you advertisements. What that means is if you have what a Roku hell? TV and you plug something into it via HDMI, like if you're like playing a, game a place, console, like a game console, if you're, if you're playing Fortnite and like you pause it, 
They'll show. They can just show you an ad. That's that's not cool. No, that's, that's not cool. That sucks. The patent office should send that right that to is the FTC. So invasive. Yeah, that's that's insane. like so gross. That's not cool. No, we that is not, not cool let at that all. Happen. I do not like that. Canceled Nolan verse uh, Batman game. We knew about this. Not this one. This is, uh, oh, is a different one. Yeah, this is Project Apollo. This Nolan vs. Batman game would have featured likenesses of Christian Bale's Dark Knight and the Tumblr Batmobile, plenty of gadgets, and a unique spin on the Cape Crusaders Detective Division. Uh, it this looks like this was supposed to be the original game to feature the Nemesis system because it was being developed by Monolith. This but looks like Arkham, an Arkham game. Right. It was supposed to come out around the time of Dark Knight Rises, which was after Arkham Asylum. Uh, no, after Arkham City. Oh. They were they were making this game, I and then that like those games are so old. Yeah, they canceled and they canceled the game, uh, mostly because Nolan like didn't have the opportunity to like sign off on anything because he was busy working on the movie. But they used the technology in this to put in uh, Shadow of Mordor. It's just weird to think of like because we had the Batman Begins game in two thousand five, I and mean, it was what it was. But then like. In 2009, we got Arkham Asylum. And then in 2011, we got Arkham City, two of the best superhero games of all time. Like, how do you go back to doing a full console Batman game based on a movie mm -hmm. like that after this? There was a Dark Knight Rises game, but it was an iOS knockoff of Arkham City. So, like, it just boggles the mind that, like, they still wanted to, like, try that. And I don't, I don't think this game would have worked, like, at all. It's I, still interesting to see. I mean, it would have it wouldn't have been as good as an Arkham game, but no. it would have been at least in that style. It would have been interesting. It would have it would have been something. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then we have Toxic. Well, what the hell is Deck Nine? Deck Nine, the creators of. Um, I mean, it's a lot to get into. Deck Nine, the creators of Life is Strange and whatnot, uh, accused of a toxic workplace culture in a new report. Who's who isn't? Who isn't <laughs> accused of that these days? Right. Uh, this was particularly bad. Uh, IGN sources highlighted in instances of sexual harassment, bullying, transphobia, and other toxicity at Deck Nine, which senior management reportedly let remain unaddressed for months on end. These included harassment and aggressions uh, from an unnamed senior programmer towards female staff, with management said to have first responded to employee complaints by moving his team away moving his team's uh, desk further away from the other departments so his yelling couldn't be heard rather than take action to address his behavior. Um, yeah, it just stinks that, like, you th you think it's, like, you know, the, the big AAA studios are the ones who are, like, the most toxic, but even, like, the smaller studios are, like, rampant with, like, just bad people and bad shit happening. Yeah, I'd imagine it's more... Uh... I'd imagine the games industry is has more toxicity than has more toxic work environments than normal, you know, happy toxic work. I feel uh, like normal like, environment. Yeah, I mean, I feel like tech in general. Yeah, like has a lot of that going on like, yeah. more than you realize. Not that it shouldn't be addressed. It's no, just, obviously, it's, it's yeah. Just, it just seems like every fucking week we're talking about yeah. a toxic work environment. Yeah. Uh. All right. And then we have. But Lenovo it's definitely Le a report worth reading if you have the time. It's like really fascinating, like fascinating in a depressing way. Lenovo Legion Go Two. Uh. Yeah. Uh. During the Lenovo Legion Go roundtable interview, Cliff Chong uh, not only spoke about the Go's first months on the market, but also about what's coming next for the handheld. Uh. We're still spending a lot of resources improving the current Legion Go over the span of the last six months. Uh. We've we have unlocked from day one until now a lot more experiences and are still engineering efforts to try and bring the next wave of features to the product. Definitely, it's a product category we do see potential in, and we continue to invest. And we are looking towards uh, when the time comes. Uh, of course, having the next generation provide even more features. So okay. Lenovo is all in on the go. All right. So not anytime soon. Not anytime soon, no, but like they they had me scared for a second. Yeah. Like they they have success with it. They see it works. They're going to commit to it. There will be an, another one when the time is right. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. My fear is that these companies are going to do a yearly release. I, I feel like we might see these at a faster clip than like we see consoles because, oh, definitely. because PC tech evolves much faster than consoles and do. And because they need to make profit on them. Right. And, and we've seen this with uh, other like, like handhelds. Uh, if they, <laughs> if they don't have their own storefront, they're going to just right. fart them out. Yeah. So that's what I'm worried about. But yeah. 
uh, the person who wrote this article said they don't see this happen until 2025 or 2026, which yeah. uh, I, I would hope so. Mm-hmm. Two years, I think, is good. Yeah. Uh, all right. And then the last news, uh, a game about pooping at work. Please leave me alone. I need to poop is a game that, about balancing biological needs with the demands of the workplace, but it takes a quick hand at some WarioWare style mini games to meet both urges. Please leave me alone. I need to poop starts with the player's character, uh, player character's boss calling and giving them notes for an important presentation. Unfortunately, this coincides with the protagonist needs to take a dump. This introduces a very important question. Do you hear your boss out, thus arriving to the presentation well prepared and ready to go? In more ways than one, unfortunately, or do you hang up and sprint directly to the can? Finally, a game for me. <laughs> In the top <laughs> left corner, the bar is clench strength. Okay. I I just I more people need to know about games like this. It is currently on sale for three dollars on Steam. Oh, that's pretty hey. Hey, you can hey, play I it. Can play it <laughs> Uh, uh, all right. That's all the news. That's all the news. Here's this. Gotta say, slow Twitter week. This is hard drive again. Man thinks games were better when he was blind to their blatant political themes. Yeah. Isn't it how it is? I'm seeing a lot of discourse about Helldivers. Uh, very stupid. Very I, stupid dude, discourse. Dude, it's the same discourse as people like who are mad at X-Men 97. Like when people are finally like, wait a minute, the X Men are woke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they sissified uh, 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 Gambit. Yeah, he used to be manly. But yeah, now, he's now, a now he wears a crop top. Yeah, okay, big deal. Or like they made they made morph trans. Now all of a sudden you care morph? about morph. morph, 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 morph is trans. Yes, their name is morph. Yes, and they're trans. Yes. Wow, <laughs> Mark! You don't, you don't, t- you're not gonna tell me they've always been <laughs> flip flopping. <laughs> A character who was introduced into the show specifically to die in the first two episodes to let you know that like the stakes were high. Oh. Now I'm, I'm assuming sudden... they're a shapeshifter. Yes. Morph. Okay. Yes. So is it a fucking surprise? <laughs> so now all of a sudden you care about a formerly minor character. Oh That's my dumb. god. This it's it's things like this that make me wish certain fandoms never existed. <laughs> like whenever I see somebody get mad about Star Wars, I wish George Lucas made Apocalypse Now instead of Star Wars because that's what he was originally going to do. Uh. Anyway, uh, that's that's now we'll talk to you. people. Yes. For better or for worse. Let's start with people who left comments on last week's podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. Uh, we got uh, where are we? Why is it always so hard to find it? We All got right. Eric who says. Do you guys remember when Long Island finally got a Sonic like 10 or so years ago? Still haven't gone. It's the Deer Park one was the first one, right? Yeah, I used to go to New Jersey Yeah, to go to Sonic. Yeah, it sucked. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, then we got the one in Deer Park, and I went there, and it was good. Yeah, I've been there a couple times. Yeah. I've been to the one. Have I been to the one in East Meadow? I've been to that one. I think we it's drove through it, but then the kids woke up, so we just kept going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um... There is a, uh, I- I'm on the, the Neighbors app, yeah. or whatever, the Ring Neighbors yeah, yeah, app, yeah. Uh, and uh, people were going nuts about the earthquake. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, one person tweeted, uh, or one person wrote on the app, like, are we going to receive compensation for this earthquake from FEMA or something? And I don't know if they were joking, <laughs> but I wrote, maybe Wendy's will give out chili like they used to do when the Islanders would win. <laughs> That's a little Long Island joke for you guys. Yeah. Anyway, Melon says, Denny's has gone downhill. I wouldn't be seeing a Denny's in a Tekken nowadays is all I'm saying. Damn. If you're not even good enough for a Tekken game. Yeah, dude, well, I mean. I mean uh, Waffle House is Waffle the House makes more sense. Only- Denny's would make sense to be a map in Rock Band. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Crest says, not a horse person podcast. Well, good name users. <laughs> Fuck you. 
<laughs> Erk618 says, people whining that people whining their games won't work on Series S Nintendo Switch users. First time? Yeah. Yeah, because... Yeah. I mean, people just don't develop for that. Yeah. Nick Province says, I'm noticing a common theme here with the show lately. Every week, I feel the need to turn to turn the tune in to see if one, Bob fixes Will's Steam Deck, and two, did Bob update the backlog? I did not update the backlog. <laughs> I've not done that yet. All right, now we're in uh, the chat with you. Chat proper. People. Yes. Bob, what's your go to Valorant agent? I play. Um, Mostly Cypher, but a little bit of Chamber sometimes. I am not a good shot. So playing as Chamber, not the best pick. Mm -hmm. But he's fun. So I play as him. Uh, Gavin Guidry, illustrator of Superman 78. The Metal I looked Curtain for that. I was last... at a comic book store yesterday and I, I couldn't find it. I now have a local comic shop and the guy actually saved my issue for me. So oh. thank you. I don't want to be that guy. I, I used to have a pull list and then it made me I not want to go to the comic list, book store but he anymore. He knew I was collecting that. So like he saved me the last few issues. Little uh, does he know, you know the guy. Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, he is correcting me. He said they, uh, Morph is non-binary. Fair. I know there's a lot of, remember, we're two uh, cis they white guys. <laughs> there's a lot of like particularities that we are unclear about. So we apologize. They're literally whatever they want to be. <laughs> literally. Yeah. They're, They're not... a Republican's worst nightmare. <laughs> uh, he, uh, Birds of Prey too, apparently. Yes, that's uh, soon. I will be getting that as well. Uh, I I left you the P.O. box in the chat. I don't know if you got it. I will DM you on Twitter. It's in the description of the YouTube video. Yes, that too. Uh, anyway. Okay. Uh, what else we got? Oh, I'm looking. What Roxy should have done is a Batman game where you swap into an other characters like GTA V that somehow made Batman's missions easier or harder depending on how much effort you cleared them. They, did they try to do that with Gotham Knights? No, Gotham Knights, like, you could, you could just pick a side, you pick one of the sidekicks and you just do the mission from there. Like, you can't swap at, uh. you can't swap at random. Arkham Knight like had a really cool feature where like you can tag team like where there were certain missions where like you know you're Batman and then you have to do a quest with Robin but like you can ping pong back and forth between the two at at will but it's not the whole game. It would be really cool if like you had all of Gotham and then with a press of a button you could just beam over to Nightwing or beam over to Robin or like do missions where like it's the two of you yeah like at once and then just go back and forth. Did you say that was Arkham Knight? Arkham Knight. That was DLC only, wasn't it? No, that was in the game. Was in, in the game, in the game proper. Yeah, Robin. Yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah, I think, especially after playing Gotham Knight, Gotham Knights, I think Arkham Knight is due for a serious reevaluation, like a serious reevaluation. No, fuck that. <laughs> uh, Fan made Nintendo Network replaces. I'm making a video on it. <laughs> will you be making a video? Yes, I will be. I I already did it. I yeah. set up Pretendo on my Wii U. Everything's okay. fine. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't give that much uh, functionality back into Mario Maker, but yeah. you know it's there. It, it's it's a good step in the right direction. Yeah. Bob, do you read comics too? Not really. I haven't read in like a really long time. Yeah. Uh. Stephanie, uh, Will, did you read Batman 89 comics? I did. Uh, the, there's two series of it. The first series is complete. The second series is only two issues in. I don't like those as much as the Superman 78s, not just because I'm best friends with the illustrator of the second series. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Something about the, like the 89 series is good, but I think the Superman 78 series, like capture the spirit and the tone of those movies better than the Batman 89 series do, which is weird to say because Batman 89 series is actually written by Sam Hamm, who wrote Batman 89. Sam Hamm. Yeah. Hamm. That's, a, that's a name. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I like the Superman 78s more than I do the Batman 89s, but the Batman 89s are interesting in their own right. 39 Katsu says, Bob, were you in a rock band commercial? That is true. That is a fact. We did yeah. do a backlog on Rock Band, didn't we? We did a backlog on Rock Band 2 and 3. 
Yeah. yeah. So watch that. Yeah. Uh, um, and Metascension says, place your bets. What month do we see images of the Switch successor for the first time? Uh, I don't know. Because they kept like the look of the Switch pretty like locked down. It did not leak. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, there was a lot of fake leaks. Yeah. Um, it did not leak. Uh, and we first saw it in like October. Yeah. So probably around the same time. I yeah. Think. Yeah. If they do the same release schedule, reveal in October or March. I say September. March. My yeah. bet will be September. Uh, because they might want to get ahead of other like holiday releases. Yeah. Stuff. Bob, do you have any mod projects you want to do soon? I have so many. Oh, one of them is I want to. Uh, you know how I have the Lenovo Legion go? I, I made like a little fight pad yeah, thing yeah. for it. I figured out how to make a hinge for it, but I want to do it to the Steam Deck. I want to uh, take, apparently the main board of the Steam Deck is like this big. Right. It's like very yeah, small. Yeah. I don't know why nobody's modded a Steam Deck to be a different shape. Right. But uh, yeah, I want to do that with the Steam Deck and make yeah. it foldable. Make, make it just straight up a laptop. But I got, it's all a lot of hard work and I got too many things. Mm -hmm. Uh. I think, I think that's it. All right. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden or youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put the archive version up over on youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, audible.com bet you didn't know that you can listen to podcasts on audible.com but no matter where you get the show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms oh who are we gonna raid here who are we gonna raid? here's a here's a new one for you uh i like watching this guy sometimes a bit random he does keyboard stuff okay his name's uh alex uh go watch him and i will see you all on thursday i don't know what i'm gonna do thursday but i'll see you on thursday uh val i need a long time till val time okay <laughs> also i have to film at some point tonight so not too much val thanks for being here see you later say hello to alex goodbye bye